Hello. Welcome to your yoga practice. I should have all be here in person, but hopefully we can join together and pull those in by the end of the class. So this is a review of the first chakra that we did a few weeks ago in class. And so I just wanted to repeat this class for people who haven't um, actually had a chance to review this particular chakra that we're going to be working on. Um, and we're going to do a tour, actually, over the next seven weeks of the, the chakras, the energy centers, what they mean, the subtle energy in our body, and how they help to create better health in the organs and systems of the body, um, as well as our mental health. So, very interesting um, philosophy that's been practiced by yogis, yogis for thousands of years. So, let's explore and let's begin with this particular chakra. So, um, everyone, first off, you're going to need a prop. So, you're going to need a strap or a belt. So if you need to pause the video here and go grab that, please do so. I'm going to go ahead and have that handy and just place it next to you. One other thing I recommend is perhaps a pillow, a firm pillow or a towel. Get like a beach towel and fold it up and have that as cushion uh, for your seat. So we're going to sit in meditation for just a few moments. So let's go ahead and slide our prop underneath us that we're going to sit on so you can choose and you'll know that it feels better to lift the hips a little bit so the knees can soften so um, we're looking for that um, sensation in the body just to be a little bit more relaxed so go ahead and find a nice tall upright posture and let's just go ahead and close our eyes to begin with <clears throat> so about a five minute meditation here, so please just bear in mind that with each beginning of each class, we are going to sit in meditation so we can explore energetically with our mind um, where these energy centers lie inside the body. So I want you to imagine the spine, so from the base of the spine all the way up to the crown of the head in one long line there are seven energy centers that are spinning inside the body and it's subtle energy it's not something you really notice but um, we believe that these energy channels actually affect the health of our body and the health of our mental state so we're going to talk about each one and how it applies to each particular part of the body so this first one, so let's just start at the very beginning, is called the root chakra or muladhara chakra. It's located at the place in your body where if you were to be riding a bicycle and sitting on the seat, you would feel that sensation of your seat and the bicycle uh, seat touching your body. So the perineum, the space between the reproductive organs or the sex organs and the anus. So that space right in between. <clears throat> also, your pelvic floor is part of the energetic action in this particular chakra. So just closing your eyes, I just want you to visualize where the center is in your body and then maybe do a few pelvic floor lifts so you can sort of gather up the mus musculature of the pelvic floor and then you can that a few times. So just so softening and contracting. So doing both. Um, so you can really sort of focus on this particular part. So just do that a couple times. And then we're just going to actually release. And I want your pelvis to get really heavy. I want your knees to feel, feel heavy. I want the sit bones to feel grounded in the mat. I want your um, posture to remain tall, but I want your seat to feel heavy. Just 
So this chakra deals with our excretory organs. It's part of the body, the excretory system. But it can also be said that when the energy is not moving here or we feel really congested in this area, that it can be from um, a consideration that we're not feeling very stable in our life. Perhaps we haven't had stability in our life, maybe through our job, maybe from where we are currently living or were living. Maybe you've had to move a lot. Maybe you've been in some type of accident that threatened your health. So this chakra is really centered around our emotional stability and how we're feeling in general as far as just our basic needs. So you're envisioning this center and you're breathing into this space. So as you inhale, I want you to see if you can send some breath down into the pelvic floor. You might even start to feel a little more heat or just more alive in the center as you're bringing your breath there. So consider for a moment that in your life you may have experienced a lot of stability. You had this wonderful upbringing wonderful parents, um, no financial strife ever growing up. And so as far as your stability and your basic needs being met, they were never threatened, correct? Then consider the other side of the coin where maybe your upbringing was not ideal in the sense that you, ne you didn't feel safe, maybe. Or you, were, you worried about where your next meal was going to come from or where you were going to be living next or if you could pay the bills or your parents could pay the bills. Or those types of things come into play when we're talking about our sense of security and stability. And we can carry emotional strife with us into our adult life, even when we gain those things, even when we start to have this really stable life and all the things that we really want and that we dreamed of having maybe, we can still hang on to that emotional strife to, to the degree that we might feel like what we have is not enough that we need more. So we start to kind of be in this cycle of how much is enough. And if your basic needs are already met, then maybe you're transitioning to some other wants and desires. And then maybe at the end of the day or at the end of your life, you start to figure out that those things are not necessarily as important you thought they were. Obviously food and shelter are the two big ones, but think about all the human beings on the planet that have not even their basic needs being met. And so perhaps in this moment, if you do feel secure and safe, you can just be grateful. You can be grateful for what you have. In this meditation, we're just we're talking about this particular chakra. I'm wanting you to have your eyes closed so that you're really listening. And you're listening to my words and you're taking them into your heart, absorbing them without visual stimulation. All the poses that we're going to practice today are going to be based on feeling more grounded. And during this time where really sure 
what's going to happen tomorrow, right now, especially right now, this is going to be a great practice for that. So even if you're feeling on top of the world in every other aspect of your life, maybe just feeling grounded in this moment will be all you need from your yoga practice. So from here, just take a few deep breaths in through your nose, in and out. So starting to transition to nose breathing only. And so maybe the legs are starting to get a little tense and tired from sitting. So let's just bring the knees up and out and just reach down and just kind of massage the knees and the toes. And then go ahead and remove the blanket from behind you. And you're gonna to come to your back. So just very gently lower yourself down and grab your strap. So your strap or your belt is all you're gonna need. Let's draw our knees into our chest and just give yourself a hug. And just rock from side to side. Taking your palms onto the tops of your knees, you're just going to inhale and the knees are going to move away. And then as you exhale, you're going to draw them in towards your chest. You're going to inhale, take the knees away. And Exhale, draw them to the chest. Just do that a few times. So just inhaling away and drawing them into your chest. Or just waking up the length of the spine and noticing how you're feeling today. Just back and forth. And then let your left foot come to the floor and your right foot, we're going to take the strap wrap it around. So take the belt, strap, whatever you've got handy, long on either side, evenly spaced, and just drop the arch of the foot and just flex and point a few times. So your knee can be soft here. This is really just about sensation, these first few moments. So just flex and point without pulling too hard. Knees can be soft. And then we're going to start to bend and straighten the knee. So you're going to Inhale, with the foot away, and then you're going to exhale, draw the knee in. So inhale and push the foot away. Exhale, draw the knee in. So I'm keeping a firm grip on the strap as I do this. So just back and forth with the breath. Inhale and exhale. Just do this a few times. really charging up actually the energy of the legs here. So you should be feeling um, the leg muscles start to fatigue a little bit and that's what we want. We're actually kind of firing up the quad, the hamstrings, and feeling the thigh bone as it rests into the pelvic bowl. And noticing these sensations in the body. Let's start to straighten the left leg and let's take the strap in, in our right hand and sweep our left hand out to the side. So from here, the knee can be soft, depending on your flexibility. And you're going to actually just sweep your right leg out to the side. And just take a few breaths here. So I use my elbow to bend and like soften towards the floor out to the side. And again, softening your knee is going to um, create a little less sensation. So if you need less, that's your modification. You're just going to bend your knee. Notice your breath. See if you can smooth it out. So nice inhales and exhales through the nose. Okay. And then slowly bringing the foot back up to center. Change the clasp to the left hand. Sweep the right hand out to the side. And we're going to cross over the body now. And 
I'm actually turning onto my left side. So my right shoulder is going to pop up just a bit, and that's okay. Just, just a few breaths here. So nothing too intense in these first few, you know, poses because we're not warm yet. So let's keep it nice and gentle. So just go to a degree that feels satisfying without overdoing it. Especially if you haven't gotten on your mat in a while. So just acknowledging that. And then bending your knee to come back up. So you feel really stable in the back body. Release that foot, change, and put the strap on the left foot. Okay, so extending the foot out again. Flexing and pointing. Perhaps rotating the ankle. Whatever feels good. doing that a few times. Starting to open the hamstring again. Knee can be really bent. If my leg is straight and you cannot do that, then just because I've been working on flexibility a little bit longer perhaps, let's extend the right leg. Sweep your right hand out to the side to counterbalance this pose and then take your left foot to the left side. Elbow to the mat. Gaze up at the sky. So just you know, turning your gaze up and then closing your eyes. Noticing the sensations in the body because if our eyes are closed during some of these poses, we can actually refine the pose just a bit. So I want you to feel for rooting the right side of your pelvis down. And if it helps to engage your right quadricep a little bit, you can do that. So you can hug the muscle to the bone as your right arm is extended out to the side. And one more breath here. And then just bending the knee to soften and to come back up. We actually forgot to charge up this leg, so let's do that first. So bring the right foot in, and let's inhale the foot away, and then exhale, draw the knee to the chest. Inhale away, exhale to the chest. Just do that several times. So inhaling, pushing away. So I'm keeping a firm grip, so really drawing the back body down as I do this movement. So I still feel really grounded. Remember I said, we want to feel grounded in this particular practice. All right, and then from here, extend the right leg, take the strap into your right hand, extend your left arm, and cross the body. So now it's a twist. So you can feel the abdominal region compressing. You can feel the outer um, strip of the left leg, the IT band stretching here. Going for that sensation, so that's a good that's a good sensation. But then just one more breath in, and then softening the knee. Let's come back up to center. Let's release the strap, and then just place that off to the side. You're not going to need that again, so just get that out of the way. Bring your hands by your side, and let's actually just move into a bridge pose here. Okay, so you're going to scoop the tailbone under. You're going to lift the hips, lift the chest, and you're trying to create this long line of energy from the shoulder to the hip to the knee. So you're going to push down through your feet strongly here, and your hands are going to be by your side. So just feeling a nice little back bend, and you're energizing your legs. So you are using your leg muscles here, and you're squeezing your butt, and you're lifting your chest towards your chin to feel a little back bend. Let's interlace our fingers underneath by crawling our shoulders underneath us a little bit and then feeling maybe the elbow straighten and maybe the front of the chest open just a bit. Okay. And then let's slowly cat tilt the spine all the way down. Good. Knees to chest. Hands underneath knees. Then rock yourself up. And all you're going to do is slide your hips back, and you're going to actually come to your belly. A few more little back bends here. So come on down. Bring your palms beside you, palms face down, forehead down. Legs are together. You're going to really engage the back body in this movement. So you're going to inhale. So 
sorry guys, the window is gonna shut off a couple times. So you're gonna inhale, lift your chest and head, squeeze the back body, and you're gonna exhale and lower down. Forehead to the mat. Do it again. This time inhale, lift the chest, the head, and the feet. Whole back body is engaged. And then we lower back down. Let's slide our hands underneath our shoulders. Walk the pelvis side to side. Press into the palms. Press into the tops of the feet. Inhale and slowly rise halfway for baby cobra. Elbows hug the ribs here. Elbows are bent. Good. And then slowly lower back down. Do that one more time. Inhale. Just peel your heart up. Squeeze. Feel the butt engaged, feel your legs engaged, and then slowly bow. Good, let's press up into a tabletop position, and then press back to child's pose. So take the knees really wide, as wide as your mat, bring your big toes together, and just come down. So just resting on the elbows, forehead to the mat. Maybe moving the pelvis side to side here, just feeling a nice release of the low back. And let's move into downward facing dog. So palms are on the mat. Fingers spread wide. This is important. Root the palms down. So I want you to feel all the edges of your hand down. A lot of times what happens is we lift up the inner arch of the hand and that puts a lot of pressure on your wrist. So I really want you to root the hand down. That's important. Hands are shoulders distance apart. Toes tuck, we lift up our hips and we send them back for downward facing dog. So I know you can just gaze over at me and see, I'm like in an inverted V, okay? And my heels are reaching toward the mat. A lot of times what we see is people like this, okay? Really long in their dog. So what you wanna do is walk your feet in and if that means you have to bend your knees, that's where you go. Okay, so let's make it more about just opening gently, but bending the knees and being in the right position for this pose. Let your head hang and shake your head yes. Shake your head no, so we really release tension there. Good, and then let's look forward and let's step our right foot in between our palms. Squeegee the left toes back. Let your left knee come to the floor. Crawl up to the right knee and just be in a low lunge here. So just a nice couple of deep breaths. Lift your right toes, place them back down on the mat. Drop the shoulders. Take a couple of breaths. Letting the psoas open. Great for health for the low back. So Feeling issues in your low back, this muscle could be tight. Bring your hands to the mat and let's just bring our front toes up and rock your hips back for Ardha Hanumanasana. This is the half splits. So we're working at um, opening the hamstring muscle just a bit more. So really more, more um, talking about and more opening today for the lower body. Not so much the upper body, it's the lower body today, okay? Good, and then rock forward, step to dog again. Plant your hands, step all the way back. Stay for two cycles of breath. The more and more you practice yoga, eventually this pose will feel like your resting pose, believe it or not. When we first start practicing, this is like our most challenging pose. And then our upper body gets to get really strong and we learn how to energize in the other poses and bring those to life, then this pose becomes really gentle. Step your left foot forward, let your right knee come to the mat, slowly climb your way up. And so instead of taking this into a serious back bend, you can back off a little bit, maybe crawl your left toes forward a bit, and just feel the psoas. So you're looking for the right, the right uh, hip flexor to feel like it's opening up just a bit. Dropping your shoulders if you're leaning big. 
maybe just closing your eyes here for a moment. So this, this class will move slower, so you'll have the opportunity to um, turn in just a little bit more. So softening your gaze, turning in, okay? Bring your hands to the mat. Walk back, lift the left toes for your half splits on the side. So I like to feel for pulling the outer hip back, okay, as the outer right hip moves forward. So outer left hip moves back, outer right hip moves forward for this pose. A little refinement there. Good, and then walk forward, plant the hands again, step back, downward facing dog. One more breath. I really want you to feel your hands and your feet today as they're touching the mat. And these next few poses will be all about the feet. <clears throat> and then slowly start to walk your feet towards the front edge of the mat. So let's just hang for a few breaths in a forward fold. So again, opening the hamstrings. So my hamstrings um, are pretty flexible, so I can straighten my knees. Most people have a real difficulty with that, and so they bend their knees instead. And that's okay, because you're still feeling sensation. And that's all you're looking for, is for that sensation. Feel also the spine start to lengthen. You can almost envision the space between the vertebrae growing in length here. And then with knees bent generously, let's slowly roll up to the spine. Notice that shift of energy. It just rises all the way to the back of the skull as you roll up, roll up nice and slowly. So this is the energy channel that we're talking about that runs up through the spine, as you can see here in my photographs. Talk about the location of the chakras, the root being here at the base, the others flowing up, coinciding with different parts of the body. So let's take our feet really wide into a squat, okay? A goddess squat. So you're just going to take your feet wide, maybe reach your hands out or bring them to prayer, whatever feels comfortable, or maybe rest your hands on your knees. You've got options, but let's pick up our toes first, then place them back down, and then squat a little bit lower. So you're really just focusing on opening the inner thighs, but maybe let's lift the pelvic floor a few times here. So we can squat, feel our feet and then lift the pelvic floor, and then release, okay? So let's bounce a few times. So lift up out of the squat a bit, and then come back down. And up and down a few times. So lifting and lowering. And lowering and breathing. Just kind of charging again, the legs, the energy driving up into the pelvis. This is where we want it to reside today. Stuck energy in this part of the body. Good. And then slowly straighten your knees, turn the toes in. Step to the top of your mat. Let's throw flow through one vinyasa. Okay? So feet are together. Let's inhale, sweep our hands wide and up towards the sky. Drop your shoulders. And then exhale, fold with bent knees all the way down. Take your hands to your shins to inhale on half lift and lean forward. Gaze out, flat back. Exhale to bow in. Plant your hands. Step back, downward facing dog. So this is where you could come if, as we tour the chakras, you do not like the vinyasa. Some people don't like it. Some people don't like downward facing dog in the very beginning. So you can always take other options if you need to. Of course, I try to encourage you to be in your dog and to follow the vinyasa if you can. But you find that it's just not for you, there are other options. So we're gonna rock into a plank, engage the core, and then you're gonna lower your knees and tuck your toes, and lower your chest all the way to the mat. Let's inhale with the feet down, fingers spread into your cobra, bhujangasana, lift up, and then sit back to child. 
So again, remember we're looking to ground the energy today. Life feels like it's spinning out of control for you or moving too quickly. This is a great practice to do to ground the energy. Okay, and then slowly rise. Tuck the toes up and back. Walk to the top of your mat. Bend your knees generously and let's sweep our hands up into the week. Toss in a chair pose. So you're going to sit back in your chair. Okay, so visualize like there's a chair behind you. You've got to try and get your seat as low as you can. Then lift your hands as high as you can. It's going to be really challenging. Now squeeze the inner thighs towards each other. Squeeze the sit bones towards each other. Lift your toes. Place them back down. And then let's spring up. So spring up, rise, and then draw your hands to your heart. Take a breath or two. Okay, let's inhale, sweep our hands up again. And then exhale to sit back. Squeeze, energize, pull the navel in. Good, and then inhale to rise up. Draw the hands to your heart. Stay right where you are. I'm just going to turn to face you so we can do some standing poses. So from here, tree pose. So step onto your left foot. Lift the toes, place them back down. Feel all the edges of your feet. Okay. Feel all the edges of your feet. Now send your tailbone down and pull your navel in. I want you to feel this part of the body energized. So what can you do to liven it up a little bit? Look at the pelvic floor. Take your right foot and place it either at your ankle, at your shin, or at the inner thigh. Now you're going to press your foot into your thigh as you bring your hands to your heart. Try to keep the pelvis facing straight ahead, so do not let the knee Fly out to the side. We're all in alignment here. And then maybe the energy rises from the ground and you feel like you can lift off. Maybe you feel like you could spread the branches of your tree. And then maybe you draw your hands back to your heart. Come out gracefully of the pose and step onto the right foot. Let's change sides. So bring the foot in towards the ankle. Pick up the toes, place them back down. Maybe grip the mat a little bit with your toes. This can help with stability as well, okay? So think about that. Now let's envision roots moving down beneath us, like we're actually planting our tree underneath our foot. Maybe bring your foot up a little higher. Find your version of your tree. There's three options there. Palms close together. Hips is soft. Shoulders drop. Palms pressed together to brighten the energy across the chest. Maybe we extend. your breath. Palms back together. The indexes. Feet underneath the hips. So spread them wider and then bring your palms to face me or to face the front of the mat. Sorry. So just turn your palms open so the shoulders roll back. Draw the chin back so the ears are in line with the shoulders here. Take a breath. Really feel your feet. You've noticed that through the standing poses we can feel that, that energy from the ground. That provides us with our stability. Okay. So left foot now again. Draw your right knee to your chest. I'm just hugging in here. Level one would be here. Or maybe here. Good. 
also reach down if you are a little more advanced and you would like to go here to humanize up. Advanced yogis, you know where you can go. Hand to waist, or to extend. Okay. We'll draw it back in. Try to come out as gracefully and quietly as you can. Take a breath. Back onto your right foot. Left for me. Beautiful job, guys. Let's reach down. Perhaps the foot comes up. Perhaps our shoulders can pull upright. Pull up and back. Perhaps we've got the toe grabbed. So the first two fingers grab the toe. Maybe there's an extension here, maybe not, depending on my, my left side, your right side. Go for it again. Sometimes. Sorry, guys. You know what it looks like. Straight out front. And then come out again. To release the tension, let's inhale, sweep our hands wide and up. And exhale to bend our knees, four fold all the way down. And this time hang, bringing the knees behind us into that tabletop position again. Let's sit back on our heels. <clears throat> so we'll be grounding our energy again, so back down to the mat. So let's take our knees wide. And for those of you that have um, knee issues, your blanket or your towel could go between the knees or the shins and the feet. If you have a block handy, you could sit on your block. Um, but you're actually going to lean back and switch, stretch the quads here. So find where you need to go in this pose. So you're going to maybe lower to your elbows or your forearms. You can go as deep as you like. In fact, you know, the final pose could be all the way back, all the way. So you could bring your head to the mat, okay? So this is optional, obviously. It takes some time to get there. And actually is a pretty deep back bend, which we're not really going for today. We're not really going for the super deep back bends. We're going for lower leg, or legs, or excuse me, and pelvis awareness today. We're looking to release the contractions in this part of the body. So go ahead and rise up, shake out the legs, cross at the shins, and come back to your seat. So just a few seated poses. So just stay facing me. And you're going to bring your right foot on top of the left thigh if you can. If not, it's here on the shin or make it here in front. So you you just you decide where you want it to be. And then all we're going to do here is fold forward, but I want you to bring your hands beside you, sit up nice and tall. In fact, pick up your pelvis and then let it come back down. And then you're going to slide your hands forward. You're going to dip your chin in. hip stretch. So this is really like pigeon pose, except without the hip flexor, flexor stretch of the opposite leg. So you're actually stretching your outer hip and glute and your IT band a little bit on your right side without having the other leg behind you and being on top of your knees. So just dip your chin in towards your chest. a couple breaths here. Mm -hmm. And then rise up. Go nice and slow. And 
here, let's change the cross of our legs. Okay? So now you're going to bring your left foot on top. So find that position, that sweet spot where you feel most comfortable. Sit up tall again. So the most important thing is to feel your sit bones on the floor. And if that's really hard for you to do, then maybe slide something, your, your cushion or your towel underneath your seat. Walk your hands forward again and melt into the pose. Nice deep breaths are going to encourage the release of the musculature. Now, if you're interested in these types of poses and, and really releasing tension and stress in the body, then the yin class that I'll be taking tomorrow is phenomenal. It's all about the release of the musculature. So if you're suffering from tightness, um, if you have to sit in a chair all the time, or if you do activities where you don't really spend any time stretching, it's a great complement to um, those activities. So I highly recommend you and I love it. I do a practice every week. Slowly rise and now two practices a week. So one of my favorite, most attended classes at uh, my body yoga. So please come if you can there or follow me here when we're doing these classes. So. From here, let's just extend our legs straight out in front of us. Let's sit up nice and tall. And so you want to feel the sit bones move back a little bit. And if you need to plop something under your seat, you could do that. But just sitting up nice and tall, maybe flexing the ankles so the toes are coming towards you. You could also prop your knees here. So if you have really tight hamstring, here you go. You've got an option. This feels really a lot better for the low back. And then slowly come forward. So in your forward fold for a couple of minutes. And just breathing nice and deep. And again here, connecting to that part of your body that's touching the floor where your root chakra lies. Understanding that as we hold and grip through life, <laughs> hold on for dear life, we sometimes have to recreate these patterns of tension in our body that sometimes never get dissolved. They just create chronic numbness. So what can we do to clean that up? How can we feel healthy? How can we move freely into our 80s and 90s? How can we keep moving? How can we keep getting up out of the chair, getting in and out of the car easily? The only way to do that is to keep moving. And if it is hard for you to move, then maybe stretching. Maybe stretching is what you need. So from here, slowly rise. And just notice that as you come out of the pose, there's this flushing that you'll feel, this flushing of energy in your body that just... just if you're really paying attention, you're going to feel that shift and the change, and that's what yoga is all about. And if we were looking at flushing the tissues, stretching, bringing energy and life back into the body, and then guess what? The mind follows, follows that, so that's really good. So just shake out the legs. From here, let's do a twist. So let's bring our left foot underneath us and take our right foot around and on top. If that's impossible for you, straighten your bottom leg. You've got an option here. So you take your option. My left hand is supporting me, so I sit up nice and tall. So I want that long line of energy from the crown of my head to the base of my spine, where my perineum is. I'm rooting my foot down, and I'm just going to hug my knee into my chest, but I'm going to turn and revolve. So I'm going to bring my right hand behind me, and I bring my left elbow and wrap it around the knee as best I can. Um, you've got an option. You could just reach your hand. You could reach the whole elbow or you could bind and bring the elbow to the outside. As long as your spine is straight. So try to press through the right hand to sit up taller. You want to feel the low back arch. You don't want to be flat in the low back here, okay? 
So see if you can feel that arch as you turn and maybe gaze over the right shoulder. And then again, noticing your breath. So in our yin yoga, we would do gentle stretching um, that will affect the deep tissues of the body, the ligaments and the tendons around the joint as well. So it's fabulous for your body. So bring your right hand to the outer knee, sit up really tall, draw the shoulders back and down, and then turn and revolve with your left hand supporting you behind you. Wrap the, leg, the arm around. Turn and gaze. Again, notice, does this bother your neck to look? Can you maybe just keep the head centered right over the chest? Yeah, okay, so just keep it centered. Okay. One more breath in. And then slowly release out. Let's bring our feet in front of us. Slowly lower to our back. So scoop up the knees, the back of the knees, the thighs, and slowly come up. Let's take our feet as wide as our mat. So my knees are bent, but my feet are planted like right at the edge of my mat. I'm going to bring my hands by my side, and I'm just going to slowly windshield wiper side to side. Noticing if you can keep the upper body soft while I do the rest, okay? So this should feel good. This should feel like a massage for the glute muscles. Massage for the sacrum, the low back. From here, extend the left leg. Let's bring our right foot on top of the left thigh. Let's cross the left hand on top of the thigh and let's just slowly revolve into a twist. So you're going to extend your right arm to the side, just nice and gentle. And let's keep our head center or maybe gaze to the right if that feels good. So you can kind of look down the right arm. And here's where I like to really get long through my right arm and my hand. So really reach away because then you're going to feel this lovely pull along the ribs on the right side and all of those muscles. Just all of the muscles of the body can get really tight, but these can especially, and they can constrict our breath. You know, the muscles of the torso, we can clamp down on the, the belly, which can, you know, these, um, restrict our digestion. So just kind of looking to open up everything. So from here, extend the right leg, bring the left foot on top of the right thigh. Let's cross over again. So three big twists here today. So extending the left arm out to the side. We'll be exploring twisting and how that applies to these chakras, um, the, the next two chakras actually, as we move up the body into the pelvis and into the abdominal region, these two energy centers. They're so vital and so important. I mean, the whole body cavity obviously carries all of our organs. But if we're not feeling healthy in these areas, mental state follows, right? We get agitated, we get anxious. We don't have as much patience. Let's reach our hands overhead. Take a big stretch. Let's extend, actually, happy baby pose. So let's draw our knees into the chest. Reach up for the outer feet, ankles, or shins, whatever you can grab. But the idea is to draw your knees wide, okay? As wide as you can. So it's not about how it looks, it's about how it feels. And so you're going to draw the feet down now. So now you want some resistance so the inner thighs get stretched. 
but then you're also bringing um, balance back to the spine after you're twisting. So you're just kind of neutralizing that action. And so a good a good yoga practice should actually leave you feeling better, not worse. It should leave you feeling balanced. So hopefully I'm going to be able to bring that to you in the next seven weeks. So scooching your shoulders back a little bit if you need to, extending your legs out. Let's turn our palms to face up and let's close our eyes. If you have anything that you would like to cover your eyes with, great. But if not, just close your eyes and definitely spend some time in Shavasana. So in this pose in particular, I want you to feel the body, the, the whole back body drop down. So from the heels to the calves, to the hips and pelvis, the upper back, perhaps the shoulders, the back of the shoulders back of the head, there's this dropping, this sensation of dropping back, getting heavy, so I want to emphasize this through our breath. Start to expand the inhales and the exhales. If you weren't thinking much about your breath before, let's, let's let that happen again now, here and now. So full breaths, just filling up the cavity of the whole torso. At first, you're noticing that sensation, just the, the body cavity filling with breath. Eyes closed, perhaps you're starting to notice the breath extend to other parts of the body. And you feel, you feel the breath start to extend to all edges of the body. Imagine that energetically inside, perhaps. You're feeling a tugging of the skin in other areas of the body besides the torso. Feeling the tugging, you know, as the inhale comes in and the exhale, there's a release. Feeling some movement in those parts of the body. So literally, Imagining your breath extending to all parts of the body. Your face is soft, your jaw. a little visual guidance here. Imagine yourself lying on a blanket in a field, open field. The temperature is perfect. There's a light breeze on your skin. And you can actually look up and see the sky above you without the sun your eyes, perhaps there's these soft, billowy white clouds above you, soft, cotton looking clouds, just very slowly passing overhead. Relax. 
descent of wonder. At how large the universe is. And so at how beautiful our earth is. How beautiful the planet is. All that it offers us. Feeling your connection to the earth right now, feeling your whole body, feeling the energy of earth giving to you, you're drawing the energy out. With each inhale, maybe as you exhale, you're returning that energy back. the inhale and you're exhaling and you're releasing that energy back out. It's just this gentle breeze. The sky is beautiful and expansive. to mind in this moment is what happened. And slowly we start to slide our feet back into a bent knee position. So your feet are supported by the floor beneath you. And then just very gently roll to your right side, just pausing. Using your hands for support, just slowly rise. Maybe your eyes are still closed. Maybe you're enjoying that sensation of just being able to tune out all the visual stimulation. Maybe the eyes can still watch these things. They're so plugged in. Can you unplug? of Mandadara, the root chakra. And we would recognize things within yourself. I know I've been meditating all too, but maybe it's time to release some of the aura of your fear life. Maybe you're perfectly balanced in this chakra and you did not need this particular practice today, but you gained some knowledge, some insight. Thank you for joining. Thank you.